Hello, welcome to the plenary sessions for Virtually Casi 2020. I'm so happy to be with all of you. It's such a nice occasion for us to be together. All of us know what the really Casi is when we're all together. And so this is unusual for all of us. It's unusual for you and it's unusual for me. And I'm enjoying the idea that you will see me even if I can't see you. I'm so glad that you're going to be with us for these virtual lectures. I'm sure you will like them and I know you'll enjoy learning about Adlerian psychology. I want to make sure people who are new to Adlerian psychology understand that Adlerian concepts and methods are good for any period of one's life. But in this presentation, I'm going to say that when we are in a crisis or we have to meet unusual challenges, the concepts of Adler and Dreikers are especially useful. And I will try to explain why they are. One reason is that these concepts and methods give us resilience and courage which is what we need to cope better with any challenges that we face. Most of us are used to a certain way of life, and when big changes come that demand new ways of dealing with them, we're not always very effective. But the current crisis has affected all of us in negative ways and made it hard for us. Today, people all over the world are facing a biological challenge. But it turns out that the biological challenge has its most severe consequence in terms of its social challenge. In other words, being isolated from each other, not seeing each other close up and hugging each other is for all of us a huge social stress and psychologists all over the world are beginning to understand this. That Adler's ideas about humans being social creatures and that we need each other in order to be strong emotionally and mentally, this is something psychologists are beginning to understand in a way they never understood before. For Adlerians, it's an obvious understanding because we've known for a long time that humans are fundamentally social creatures. And we are that because of evolution. It's part of our biology. Adler recognized this before other social and psychiatric writers understood that. He understood that from an evolutionary perspective, humans survive the way they do because humans are social. And the nature of the group, which supports the individual, is so essential for our survival as individuals and as a group. And human bonding and mutual support is a biological necessity. So the fact that we're social creatures is part of our biology. And Adler and Dreikers and all the early Adlerians knew this already a long time ago. Modern psychologists are beginning to catch up. If we think about how small animals interact, you know that living in groups with members grooming and nurturing each other is what many animals do that are social creatures and humans have the same need and the same skills as social creatures to support each other in nurturing ways. And that's how we survive physical traumas and physical challenges as well as social ones. The human species, is what I'm talking about. 
not any specific person, but rather all of us as humans, that we survived as a human species in many terrains, many temperatures, because humans sustained each other, because they lived in groups and they bonded. They collaborated with their skills and talents, and that was how they assured sufficient food and shelter for all the individuals in the groups, and they provided each other with cognitive stimulation so that the individuals could function. The human species across the world and for many millennia had certain characteristics like educating its young, protecting them, and making sure that all members of the group joined forces to take care of each other and to do that in close-knit groups. The closeness of the family, which is part of human existence, is what's being challenged in our time of pandemic, and that makes it very hard when children can't see their parents and parents can't see their children and can't hug their grandchildren. It goes against their biological survival and their biological evolution. Human groups need members of the group to be able to be together. And that requires intimate human contact. So what I'm talking about is Adler recognized early in his writing about humans needing to be together and helping each other. And he would have predicted a pandemic would be very hard for us in terms of creating social stress and emotional stress. In other words, of all psychology, Adler would have understood more than anyone how a pandemic could hurt us in ways that other people wouldn't have predicted. Part of our evolution is to be social and to have intimate relations. And he wrote about this as a biological necessity because he observed human groups when they were able to be together, not when they were told to stay apart. He observed humans functioning in normal social groups, and he saw that as part of evolution, it's a biological necessity that humans flourish by being close-knit and working together. A pandemic which requires humans to live apart goes counter to human intrinsic needs. For Adler, the intrinsic need to feel belonging to the human group and to contribute to the well-being of the human group was an actual fact. And he made that observation not because of the pandemic, but because of the way humans actually live together in natural life. They need to bond and support each other to create strength and capacity beyond a single human being. The human group is more powerful than any one individual. His observations of bonding and collaboration were in terms of how humans actually lived. Human groups live in small intimate groups and they live in larger groups based on shared goals and values. So for a pandemic that forces us not to be together goes counter to our intrinsic inner needs and the kind of life that we really want to have, which is intimacy with others. Humans want intimate bonds for their emotional well-being and 
physical connectedness is part of that. Even small animals have a need for physical contact with others as part of their development. If you watch nature programs and you see how elephants and monkeys live, and these are social animals, being together in a group and being intimate and in contact with each other is how they survive. And humans have some of those same characteristic touch and physical in intimacy are basic for bonding and preventing children from playing with their peers as happens in the pandemic now makes it hard for physical contact which young ones around the world need. So you can say that the pandemic forces us to live in social ways that are foreign to our inner needs. And what I'm going to talk about is how can Adlerian principles help us overcome these deficits, which we're all experiencing with social distancing. Let me start with the idea that feeling belonging is part of who we are when we're young and when we're older. All of us have a strong need to feel we belong to a human community. And we can overcome our feeling of isolation by alternative ways involving speech and visualizing, which is not involving touch or physical contact. So Adlerians can be creative in finding alternatives to what is otherwise our inner need. Social interest can be satisfied because we can contribute to the well-being of others even when we're socially isolated. We have to remember that information technology, which allows us to have a virtual ikasi and a virtual existence, in fact, came about through human collaboration. It didn't come about by a single person. It came because humans worked together and helped each other. And the tool of collaboration is available to us even when we don't have physical contact. We can contribute to the well being of other people in ways that we might not have thought of. Many communities have set up all kinds of ways of contributing to the community, which otherwise they wouldn't have done. And Adlerians can be in the forefront of that. The concept of social equality is crucial for Adlerian psychology. It means all of us are convinced that each of us is an equal member of society in terms of our value as a human being. And we can believe in our own value and the equality of our value when we adopt Adlerian ideas. We can observe what others need and what we have in excess that we can give for sharing when we have this understanding of social equality, which means you and I are equal. And if we're suffering together, let's figure out ways that we can help each other and minimize the suffering of each of us. And many communities are doing this. Many individuals are doing that. That would be an Adlerian principle. When humans suffer and have obstacles, and we follow Adlerian principles and practices, this diminishes our sense of isolation, our sense of discouragement, and the emotional pain. Some of you may know that in the last few months, 
I have become a widow. And that is a very extreme kind of isolation when you lose a spouse. Some of you remember Bill Linden, and you remember that he was a very warm-hearted person. And losing a partner means a kind of isolation which most of us would try to avoid at all costs. So the social equality concept can keep us going because we know that there are other people who have pain and we can relate to them. I just lost a friend who was a very fine psychologist and I just wrote to his widow and I will tell her what it's like to lose someone you love as a partner because I want to have that sharing with her so she knows she's not alone. And many of us do this. We share with others as a way of helping them to feel that they're not alone. We try to contribute and we try to help others feel their own courage and strength because that's how we help each other. Not just in a pandemic, but pandemic more than ever. That's when we really know others need us and we can contribute. Our feeling of belonging and our sense of social equality will help us in a pandemic especially. The question people raise is why does social interest help us to cope with goals and challenges? And I think we each have to consider that. Social interest is our best help for overcoming discouragement. One of the worst things we can do in raising children is to feel sorry for the child. When we do feeling sorry, we teach the child to feel sorry for herself or himself. And the worst thing we can do is have a child feel sorry for herself or himself. When any of us as adults feel sorry for ourselves, we don't mobilize our resources. We search for forces outside ourselves. We don't rely on ourselves and our own strength. And that's exactly what we should be doing in order to meet circumstances we need to rely on our inner strength. So at the very time when we need extra inner strength, feeling sorry for ourselves is the worst thing we can do. Social interest overcomes that. When we have social interest, we're concerned about others, not about ourselves. Rikers used to say that when other people are in we need to give compassion and empathy, but we certainly don't want to feel sorry for the other person as a way of having the other person feel sorry for himself. We need the other person to believe in her own strength, not to feel sorry for herself. So all of us should remember, social interest turns us outside. It turns us towards others. It turns us to wanting to help others, not to being concerned about our own pain. Our own pain is not going to improve when we feel sorry for ourselves. Social interest helps us to prevent that kind of pain because we're concerned with helping others and we're not focusing on ourselves. Almost everybody who's listening to me will remember times when you were concerned about the well-being of another person and you focused on using your strength to help that person. And that's what I'm talking about. When we mobilize our strength to help another, we just generally become stronger. Whereas if we're feeling sorry for ourselves, we become weaker. So wanting to contribute to the well-being of the group and being concerned with the needs of the situation. This is a way to help turn our attention away from our own pain and to be concerned with others 
and use our strength to help them. Being concerned with the needs of the situation is an expression we use in Adlerian psychology because it says, let's pay attention to understanding what the current situation requires. And most of us, when we're in pain, don't consider what the current situation requires. We're only concerned with our own pain and discomfort. And being concerned with what the current situation requires mobilizes our strength. And the stronger we are, the more we can contribute. For most of us, that's something we forget. We don't think that in order to need to be strong. But the more strong we are, the more we can contribute. So social interest is a way of being stronger and having more courage. It looks outward instead of inward. It looks at coping and acting instead of withdrawing. Inward looking and being concerned with our own wounds does not improve our strength nor give us insight. And so social interest, which encourages us to look outward, helps us to move forward. It allows us to take positive actions instead of withdrawing. It allows us not to be angry or to have hurt feelings because these weaken our ability to cope. Social interest is our best protection in terms of giving us strength to deal with challenges and difficulties. The alternative of feeling sorry for ourselves robs us of our strength at a time when we need that strength to function best. So here is a basic Adlerian principle that we should be remembering when we need to feel strong. Social interest helps us to feel strong and to have courage. Another question, why does focusing on our intrinsic equal value as a human being help us to cope with challenges and obstacles? People don't think in those terms normally, but we need to remind ourselves that we all count, that we're all of equal value as a human being and we should not be paying attention to external signals. Do I have more money? Or my children are nicer and better looking than other people's? If we do that, we forget that we have social equality of all of us being of value. And in this time, when especially in the United States, we are reminded that racism and ostracism to other groups is a way of minimizing social equality, and minimizing that people feel equal, and that we hurt people that way if we minimize it. So we need to remember that each of us belongs, and so do other people belong. And we have to help each other as equals. Because when we do, we treat each other with dignity and respect, and we treat else with dignity and respect. Many of us do not do that. We're mean to ourselves. We're nasty to ourselves. We're nasty to ourselves, and we're nasty to other people because we forget about social equality, the fact that each of us deserves respect and dignity. And the more we remember that, the more we practice Adlerian psychology and help each other and help ourselves. When we forget about social equality, we tend to lash out in anger or we hurt others. And reminding ourselves about social equality helps us remind ourselves 
not to hurt ourselves or to hurt others, but to treat ourselves and others with dignity and respect. We need to believe in our own human value, and we need to believe in the value of all other human beings. That helps us in our bonding. It helps us in our intimacy. It makes us stronger and more courageous. It helps us not to be disruptive and destructive. When we believe we're inferior and not of equal value, this actually robs us of our strength. As I wrote in a paper, indulging in the idea that we're inferior and not of equal value is counterproductive to having strength for coping with challenges. If we find a situation in which we feel we're inferior, we need to get rid of that feeling of inferiority. We need to not believe in our inferiority, but believe in our social equality. We need to feel we're of equal value with others, even when external signals don't allow us to think that way. External signals are artificial. Just because somebody else has a better car or a more handsome spouse or more well-behaved children doesn't make them superior. We need to remember that we each do the best we can and we all have the same human value of helping each other and contributing. And most of us have external signals that we use, like being fussed over or having people indulge us. When, when that happens, we feel equal. But it's a false standard because we should know we are equal without all these external signals. In order to cope with trouble and to cope with stress, we need to feel equal and we need to not rely on external signals. If feeling equal value is part of our inner core beliefs, <clears throat> then we don't feel sorry for ourselves. The external signals are obviously nice to have. It's nice to get medals, it's nice to get awards, but it's so important to recognize these are not necessary in order for us to feel as equal with other human beings. Once we are convinced of our value, that we belong as an equal with other human beings, we don't need these external signals for comfort <clears throat> or for believing that we're equal. <coughs> the concept of social equality, which Adler and Dreikers championed, gives us certainty that we belong. We do not have to set conditions. Most of us set conditions and we say to ourselves, these conditions must be met in order for me to feel belonging. And Adler and Dreikers said, no, that's not how we want to live. We need to know that we belong. We don't need to have conditions. We don't need external signals to make us believe we belong. We should know we belong by our human existence. Intrinsically, we belong. <coughs> and we can contribute as a human being, bonding with other human beings. Feeling sorry for ourselves and feeling inferior are luxuries we cannot afford. If we remind ourselves of that, we will not continue to feel sorry for ourselves. We will not continue to feel inferior. We will know that we belong. We know that people have set conditions and they say to themselves without even knowing it, you must treat me this way 
or you don't make me feel belonging, and then I have the right to treat you badly. When we do that, we're violating collaboration and social interest and courage. If we make these conditions, and only under these conditions will I have courage, we're robbing ourselves and we're robbing others. We're hurting ourselves. We need courage at all times in order to function effectively. When we have courage, we understand the needs of the situation and we focus on external things rather than our own vulnerability. We face our challenges with the best of talents that we have and with the most courage that we have. Feeling of belonging is something we need within ourselves, not because external events signify it. And how does the pandemic weaken this feeling of belonging? Most of us thrive in close, intimate relationships. Our friends give us the feeling that we're important and of value. But we should remember that we're important and of value even when our friends are not with us. The open affection of others is important for all of us, but we shouldn't use it as a criterion of if we belong or not. In the pandemic, when our close friends need to be at a distance, we need to find other assuring, supporting, supporting ways to give us a sense of bonding and human support. We need to be creative about it. And this is especially true for children because the children need peer relationships. They need the closeness of their friends. So how can we help the children to come out of the pandemic without severe scars? That's a big question. I'm going to suggest that parents who help children connect with their friends in virtual ways are helping their young ones learn new skills for connecting. Long walks or bike rides may be the answer for some children. They can ride a bike with their friend and be far apart physically, but still feel a sense of connectedness and explaining to the child that missing one's friends is natural and the child needs to learn to cope with unexpected disappointments. Children need to learn how to deal with disappointments and parents have to help them in that. Parents need to help the child be creative in finding ways to dispel loneliness, to help the child to understand the times of emergency are going to happen in life and that the child is strong and can cope with it. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for the child. Help the child feel that the child can cope and that the child can find creative ways of connecting with friends. This is how the child gets stronger and has self-confidence. Children need challenges in order to learn from them. And each child at some age has to find ways of dealing with disappointments. Parents are helpful in this way, especially if they give empathy and not sympathy. Parents can use this opportunity to get closer to their own children. They can share stories of disappointments in their own life without preaching. Many parents believe that the only way to raise children is to preach with them. But that sets up an inferior superior role which you don't want to do with your children. Sharing your own stories of your own life 
allows the child to recognize the equality that you have and allows the child to have new bonding between you and the child. Share stories of your own disappointments. Of when you were a little kid and you had a hard time dealing with problems. That way the child recognizes that's the nature of life. <clears throat> life brings us difficulties and each of us needs to learn to deal with them. <clears throat> All of us can learn how to be more creative, more courageous, to practice skills that we once had, but in this time of pandemic, we find ourselves with time that we never had before. So we can do things that we never had time for before. And that allows us to rely on ourselves to find solutions instead of being miserable. A virtual ikasi is an act of creativity. And we can thank the leader of ikasi who teaches creative processes at the Ikasi Summer School for helping us to have a virtual Ikasi. That was a creative act to help us overcome some of our difficulties, not to feel sorry for ourselves, but to find solutions. I'm hoping that all of you have courage and good health, and all of you will find new ways of applying Adlerian psychology. To all of you, I wish you feel belonging, not only in facing the pandemic, but in any situation that you have in all your life. Use Adlerian psychology to remind you that you belong, that you have courage, that you can cope, and that you can contribute to the well being of other people. And please accept my virtual hugs that I sent to each of you. Lots of love and lots of hugs to all of you. And keep your strength going. The world needs you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>